Kia ora koutou, welcome to Face to Face. Uh, this week we have with us Laura Ritel. How did I do? Right? Ritel. Ritel. <laughs> uh, from Creative HQ, welcome Laura. Hi. Uh, and she's going to be talking to us today about the difficulties that people in the tech sector have in getting into New Zealand. So of course we want skilled migration, we all want uh, to, to make sure that the people who are coming into the country uh, have the skills that we need, but we don't always make it easy for them. So Laura, you were saying, you know, first off, um, what's, what's the demand for, uh, you know, people within the tech sector in New Zealand? Yeah, sure. So um, NZ Tech um, recently, earlier in the year, um, released this report that says that New Zealand companies will be looking to hire about 10,000 technically skilled people um, over the next three years, which is quite a lot of people. Um, it is. The issue there is that our ICT schools and universities around the country um, only produce about 1,500 pe per people a year. Right. So that's four and a half thousand people so we're short five and a half thousand people yeah about, about roughly about half of what the demand is yeah so the uh, question becomes how do you fill that gap and so that's probably where the skilled migrants come in absolutely and in terms of skill i mean what's the sort of starting salary we're talking here i think roughly around 50k a year for a starting salary okay so we're starting above the the mm. average wage here so we're definitely talking skilled folk, right? I don't think any yeah. of us are gonna, are gonna question that. And to be fair, this, the, the young um, grads coming out of universities are actually very highly skilled. Yeah. Um, employers tend to love them, but it just takes a wee while to, to, ter um, to train them up. Yeah, of course, of course, same, same as any industry. Yep. So the issue that we have is really our, our points system, I think, uh, in, in terms of, uh, what people need to get into the country. So our point system favours people who've been here a while and, and, and have a job. Yeah. Uh, and you've been saying that actually it's not always easy for, for people to, to find a job. Yeah, we'll probably get a few emails every week um, from people asking where should they be looking for, where are the jobs listed, do we know who's hiring, uh, how to get in touch with them and so forth. So either if the people are actually already in New Zealand on a work, um, work holiday visa or abroad, um, it tends to be a pretty difficult thing for them. Yeah, yeah, particularly if you're overseas, yeah. So because we have a few big companies, but also a lot of small companies that may not be mm. advertising widely, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, or it's in Seek and Trade Me, and those are not very known um, known places to be looking at uh, if you're abroad and you've never been to New Zealand and don't really know what, what um, solutions we're using here. And the other issue that throws, uh, that's thrown up by the, the point system is actually question of qualifications so mm. actually you know you need uh, certain qualifications in order to to, to, to stay in the country to become a, a resident mm. um, but the people don't always have that in the tech sector no not necessarily so um, what we see is pretty much that the, the best techies and developers tend to be self-taught um, both in New Zealand and overseas and so if you, you know, you are so driven and passionate and, and you become amazing at it, but you don't necessarily have a university diploma to show for it, um, you pretty much are eliminated from coming over here because right. <laughs> in the QA, you have pretty much, you can't um, show them anything, yeah. Right, so, so someone with, a, with, with an arts degree who, who becomes a, a, a a, a restaurant manager is actually valued more highly by our system <laughs> than someone yeah. who may not have a degree who's who's in the uh, you know in a fast-growing tech company. How wrong uh, is that? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> bizarre. Okay, a, a funny old system. And even once you do get here and you and you get the mm -hmm. job, um, you know the other issue is, of course, is is the the sheer time and paperwork, all the things that you have to go. What what are those hurdles that you have to go through? Oh once? joy. Um, yeah, it's uh, pretty much. The, me the medical um, requirements are pretty high. Um, I haven't seen that in other countries, but I understand why New Zealand wants, wants you to be healthy. <laughs> um, the same is with criminal records. So you have to provide them um, police records and checks that you haven't committed any crimes in any other countries that you've lived or for more than 12 months. Right, and you've yeah. lived in a, in a few, right? So Yeah, four or five. <laughs> for global citizens, it's much more difficult for global citizens to do that, yeah? yeah. So time, money, mm. and, and of course, translating your qualifications to yeah. New Zealand through NZQA. Yeah, that, which all need to be notarized as well, so that's uh, not a time. So all these things add up. Okay, so mm. you had to work to get into the United States 
and yep. here, which one's easier? US by far. <laughs> by far? <laughs> yeah. Wow, okay, so it really shows uh, how difficult we're making it for mm. some highly skilled migrants to get into the country. Uh, Laura Rittel. 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 <laughs> Thank you very much for your time. <laughs> You're welcome.